Praise God. Our Father and our God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the privilege to come before your presence. We thank you for bringing us together for the Holy Communion in the month of April. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Father, Lord, we pray for every of our members that are still coming on your way that you bring them safely into your house this evening in Jesus' name. We pray that you will not push back our worship to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, take glory of everything we do tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. For we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise.
Yet no one stops you all And I ask the Lord What name feeds you? And he said, yeah Yeah, the hallowed one the Holy One, Yahweh, the Kingdom Time, Yah, the Lord One, Yah, the Holy One, Yahweh.
Hallelujah, that's what my son will be. Hallelujah, that's what my son will be. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, 
for bringing us into this month of April and for this special Holy Communion service, Lord. We ask that your name be praised and glorified, everlasting King of glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. I'll be taking our first Bible reading tonight, and it's taken from the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 1 to 8. 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 1 to 8. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and also how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he, ar- and when he, saw that he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, There was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again in the the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Verse 8. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of the meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of of God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our hymn for today's Holy Communion service tonight is that great physician now is near. Ah. Uh-huh. 
dispelled my guilt and feet no other name but Jesus oh how my soul delights to hear the precious name of Jesus sweet as no Praise the Lord. If you are alive in the house, I said, Praise the Lord. I can only hear just one person. I said, Praise the Lord. Let's put hands together for Jesus. You can have your seat. God bless you. Our second Bible reading for this month, Holy Communion Service, the month of April, it's taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 8. I'll be reading from verse 5 to 17. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5 to 17. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the poison, grievously tormented, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and a comet, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven verse 12 but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into the outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and Jesus said unto the centurion go thy way and as thou hast believed so be it done unto thee and his servant was healed in the same same hour verse 14 and when jesus was come into peter's house he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them when the even was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all we are, that were sick. Verse 17, the last verse. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Elias the prophet saying, himself took our infirmity and bore our sickness. I pray tonight as many that are in the sanctuary and those that are watching us online, whatever Jesus has taken out of your life that is not glorifying God in your destiny. You will not return home with it tonight in the name of Jesus. I can't hear your amen. 
If that will be your testimony, let your amen be resounding. Let's rise on our feet, everybody. Father eternal, we thank you for tonight. And we thank you for the table that is set before us. Thank you because you are the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. We ask, O oh God, that you will please minister to us tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens open mightily here and just show yourself mighty. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please be seated. The Lord bless you. Amen. We're just going to read from the book of John, chapter 1. In verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and seeth, Behold, the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Tonight, I just share with us the, about the lamb who takes away. The lamb who does what? Takes away. In the scripture we have read, we said is the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. It's not only sin that it takes away, but let's start with death. In John chapter 3, when you read in verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, as Moses was lifted up in Lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. When John was saying, Behold the Lamb, he was saying, Look at the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. And somebody may ask a question: How can you, how can your sins be taken away just by looking? at the lamp. And the Bible tells us in that John chapter 3, at the same way Moses was lifted up in the wilderness, uh, so the Son of Man will be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The only thing standing between you and everlasting life is the sin of your life. But the moment Jesus takes that sin away, then you are qualified to have that eternal life. In the book of Numbers in chapter 21, in verse 6 to 9, the Bible says the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Pray unto the Lord that he do what? Take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make fiery serpents, set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass. I'm reading Numbers 21, verse 6 to 9. I mean verse 8 now. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looks upon it, shall live. You will see once again here that the people acknowledge that they have sinned, and the Bible says that they wanted the fiery serpent, which was the judgment of sin, or they wanted the serpent which was the judgment of sin, to be taken away. And when they prayed to God, God said, okay, make fiery serpents. And as Moses lifted up those, that fiery serpent on the pole, 
the people, all they had to do was look at that pole and their judgment was taken away. And the Bible says in verse 9, And Moses made a serpent of brass, put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Behold the Lamb of God, who does what? Who takes away. In the Old Testament, when they wanted sin to be taken away, in Leviticus 16, between verse 7 and 22, you will find the account. All they did was to have two animals, two goats. Upon one goat, they will sacrifice that as an offering. That's the punishment for sin. They sacrifice it. But to make the sin go away, they will pronounce the iniquity upon a second goat. And then they will take that goat into the wilderness very far. And then they will release the goat to escape. Now, that goat <laughs> that knew what happened to the other goat that they killed the goat will make sure he escapes so fast and so far away that he doesn't come back. But what is actually happening is the iniquities of Israel pronounced over the goat is taken away. This was what Jesus did for us at Calvary. Behold the lamp of God. Who does what? Who takes away the sins of the world. He died as punishment for sin. But he didn't only die for the sin. He took it away. I pray tonight that every judgment of sin is taken away. And then sin itself is taken away. In the name of Jesus. If you agree, let your amen be louder. Now, who is this lamb? Let's try to know this lamb a bit. Isaiah 53, when we read between verse 5 and 12, give us an idea of the lamb. We read a few verses and we look at the others later. He said, in the New Living Translation, he was pierced for our rebellion. That's for our sins. Crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in mystery, but he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was born like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life. And the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. I pray tonight that there will be many descendants that will benefit from what Jesus did at Calvary. The Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. I still want you to look at verse 12 of that scripture we are reading. The Bible says in verse 12, it said, I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. I want you to look at it there that when Jesus died at Calvary, he carried the sins of many. Are you one of those many? Are you sure you are one of those many? He said he carried the sins of many and interceded for rebels. In the King James Version, the Bible says he was numbered with the transgressors. He bear the sin of many and made intercession for transgressors. I pray tonight that God will indeed carry away your iniquity. 
whatsoever accusation that the accuser of brethren may have against you or against me, at this table, he will carry them away in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say better. Amen. Charles Finney said something in one of his books. He says, sin is the most expensive thing in the universe. Nothing else can cost so much. Pardoned or unpardoned, its cost is infinitely great. Pardoned, the cost falls chiefly on the great atoning substitute, Jesus Christ. Unpardoned, the cost falls squarely on the head of the sinner. Whichever way you look at sin, somebody has to pay. Either Jesus will pay or you will pay. And that is why I thank God for Christianity because it's the only belief in the whole world where somebody else paid for us. Don't bother about American politics and what they tell you about somebody paying for them. The only person who can pay for the iniquity of man is who? Jesus. No other person can pay. I pray tonight that you will accept him, believe him, and allow him to and enjoy what he has already paid for. Not even just allow him. He has paid already, but will you believe him to enjoy it? If you believe him, say a good amen. Now, sin is the cause of many of the problems of the world. In fact, practically everything is the cause of sickness. In Psalm 107, when you read in verse 17 and 18, he said, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. He said, they are so laborate all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Fools, because of their transgression. In Jeremiah 30, when you read in verse 15, he said, why criest thou for thy affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity. He said, because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. In Lamentations chapter 3, when you read in verse 39, the Bible says, why do man complain for being punished for sin? What I'm simply trying to show you is that many of the things that man suffer is a result of sin. In the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 18, in verse 4, the Bible says that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that do what? That sinneth, it shall die. In verse 20, he emphasized it again. But the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6, when you read in verse 23, he said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes, he takes away sin, he takes away the wages of sin, but he doesn't only take them away, he also gives us life, gives us eternal life. I pray tonight that that eternal life will be available to every one of us in the name of Jesus. Now, there is something about the blood, the blood of any human. Blood is very unique. The Bible says in Leviticus 17, when you read in verse 11, it said the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Blood is not manufacturable. At least science has not gotten to that level. If blood were manufacturable, there will be no need for you to start saying, let's have a blood bank and let's get people to donate blood. The reason why they keep saying donate blood is because they've not found a way to manufacture blood. Blood, Bible says, contains life. Leviticus says in 1711, the life of any creature is in the blood. And so, take the blood of a person, you are taking the life of a person. And that is why when people do anything with blood, they are doing something with life. Any covenant with blood, any oath with blood, any agreement with blood is an agreement with life. You are simply saying you are giving that life away. And so don't be careless with your blood. Life for life, that's what the Bible says. A man will give anything just to save his life. 
That was what the devil said to God in the book of Job chapter 2. When you read in verse 4 to verse 5. So it takes offering another life <laughs> to substitute for the judgment of death. Life for life. It takes offering another life. Now the life of animals can only offer reprieve for a short while. Short while. And that was what the high priest was doing in the Old Testament. It will offer reprieve for a year. And then the next year he has to come back again. Now the life of other humans cannot even help either because there is no human with an uncontaminated blood. Every human has blood that is contaminated with one iniquity or the other. And so it's not pure enough to be able to give life even back to the other people. That's why you find out that people who think they want to help each other, you find out that their help is not sufficient. The only one who can give blood, and that blood will bring you total deliverance, total healing, completely take away sin, give you perfect health, is the blood of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus' blood is without sin. There was no iniquity in him at all. Yet, he carried the iniquity of the whole world. When he was shedding his blood, it was not sin in the blood. His body carried the iniquity, but not his blood. I pray tonight that that blood that is pure will speak for you in the name of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 9, in verse 22, the Bible says, Almost everything is purged by blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There is no remission of sin. There is a difference between the blood of Jesus and every other blood that has ever been used as a token or as an offering for sin. In Hebrews chapter 10, when you read from verse 3, I'm going to read a few verses between verse 3 and verse 18. In verse 3 to 4, the Bible says, But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again, made of sin every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Verse 12. He said, but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Verse 14 now. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Verse 17. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. The blood of Jesus, so perfect, did a one-time job. I pray tonight that that blood will do a one-time job. Oh, I say it will do a one-time job in your life in the name of Jesus. Now, I've taken quite an amount of time to let you know that the blood took away our iniquity. The blood is unique and that this is the lamp of God who came to take away even the sins of the world. But what the lamp of God came to take away is not only iniquity. The lamp of God came to take away other things. And we're going to see shortly. In 1 John chapter 1, when you read in verse 7, he said, if we walk in the light as is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all iniquity. From all iniquity. In 1 Peter chapter 1 again, the Bible says in verse 19, he said, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, the Bible is saying that we are redeemed. Let, let me read verse 18 and 19 together. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation, 
received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamp without blemish and without spot. So this moment you apply that blood, every blemish is taken away, every spot, every wrinkle is taken away. By the mercies of the living God, the blood of Jesus takes away your sin, takes away your iniquities, takes away the blemish of your life in the name of Jesus. Number two, the blood of Jesus took away death. It took away what? Death. In Hebrews chapter 2, when you read in verse 14 and 15, it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Number three, he took away curses. Jesus died to take away our curse to make us to be able to inherit the blessings of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says in verse 13 and 14, cursed is he that is hung on a tree. So whatsoever curse that has been pronounced, or whatsoever curse that is in your lineage, by the reason of the blood of Jesus, that curse is taken away in the name of Jesus. It's the lamb that takes away. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you agree and believe it, say it better. Amen. Amen. Now, apart from taking away sin, taking away death, taking away curses, he took away sicknesses. Please, you will notice that I didn't say we take away. I didn't say he's taking away. I, I kept using past tense. He did what? When did he take away our curses? Several years ago. When did he take away death? Several years. When did he take away sin? Several years. He, 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 he's not just doing it now. He has done it. So he took sicknesses. He's not taking sickness. He has taken it long ago. Is God talking to somebody? The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, when you read in verse 24, the Bible says, that by his stripes you were healed. You were what? You were healed. You were healed. In Isaiah 53, when you read in verse 3 to 5, Isaiah 53, verse 3 to 5, let me read it to you in the King James. The Bible says he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. We eat as it were our faces from him. He was despised. We esteemed him not. Verse 4. Surely he had borne our griefs. To borne, it means to carry. To carry our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. I want to believe God with somebody that whatsoever is causing you grief has been carried. Whatsoever is causing you sickness has been carried. He carried them. He took them away in the name of Jesus. Let's continue. Verse 5. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are what? Healed. Even in the Old Testament, when it had not yet happened, they still used that term in past tense. You are healed. They didn't say you will be healed. They didn't say you we have healing. They said you are already healed. There is somebody hearing me tonight. That sickness has been taken away. That infirmity has been taken away. In the name of Jesus. And finally, he took away our debt. That one, somebody should like it. He took away our what? Our debt. In Colossians chapter 2, when you read in verse 14, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Every charge that was against you, 
everything that you are owing, every indebtedness, everything contrary to you, everything that is contrary to your well-being. The Bible says he took it out of the way. He nailed it to the cross. By the mercies of the living God, whatsoever is that thing written that you are owing, God takes it away. He nails it to the cross. He takes it out of your way. He takes it out of your account. He takes it out of you in the name of Jesus. All you need to do now is to believe and receive. To do what? To believe and receive. The Bible says if the spirit of Christ, the one who raised Jesus from the dead, if that spirit resides inside of you, it will quicken your mortal bodies. I want you to please understand uh, uh, as I close that sickness can be taken away but whatsoever is the damage that that sickness has caused the power of resurrection give life to the body. I'm reading Romans 8 verse 11 now. Romans 8 verse 11. So the death and resurrection of Jesus is powerful. The death is where the blood was shed to take away the sins, the death, the curses, the debt, the iniquity, and the sicknesses that we carry. They have been taken away. But whatsoever damage that has happened, even after these sicknesses have been taken away, there is a damage anywhere. There is this power of resurrection. The Bible says if the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead resides inside of you, it will do what? It will quicken your mortal body. It will give life to your mortal body. It will make your mortal body to, be re to, to, to begin to have life. I pray by the mercies of the living God that you begin to receive life. Oh, let your amen be louder. I say you begin to receive life. The life of God enters into you in the name of Jesus. When you read in Ephesians 1, the Bible says in verse 3, it says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places in Christ. Now, the power of resurrection will make us to be able to enjoy those things that are meant for us in heavenly places. Now, the death of Jesus will take away the curses. The power of resurrection will bring down the blessings. The power of resurrection will bring the healing, bring the deliverances. In that Ephesians 1, if you read in verse 17, the Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ. When he did what? He raised him from the dead. Stand up on your feet. I am excited we are in a season of resurrection. Sickness has been taken away. Infirmities taken away. Sin taken away. But the power of resurrection brings life. Remember Jesus said, because I live, you will also do what? You will also live. So it is his resurrection that gives us life. It is his death that took, that took away death. It is his death, his blood that takes away sickness. It is his resurrection that makes healing, deliverances to come into us. It is his death that takes away our debt. It is his resurrection that brings our blessing. And I pray that as you have been crucified with Christ, you now also live with him. Is God somebody living with Christ? In this season of resurrection, everything that has died, good things that have died in your life, may they begin to leap for joy in the name of Jesus. Just go ahead and thank the Lord and say, I believe and I receive. 
that which you have already done for me in the name of Jesus. I receive that healing. I receive that deliverance. I believe you have taken away that sickness. You have taken away that affliction. You have taken away that pain. In the name of Jesus, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you for the heavens that are opening for us as we partake in your body and your blood tonight. We are asking that we are declaring that we believe it and we receive it one more time in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Some people were wondering that just Friday night, we had the communion also in the night because the message was proclaiming the Lord's death. And so we had the communion that night and we were wondering, are we going to have a communion again this night? The Bible says that in the book of Revelations, let me read it to you. The Bible tells us in Revelations, in chapter 22, in verse 2, saying, the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which had how many manner of fruits? Twelve manner of fruits. And yielded their fruit, how many times? Every month. And the leaves of the tree were for what? Every month, there is a twelve manner of fruits. There is a fruit for each month. We will not miss that which is meant for this month. I pray in the name of Jesus that as you partake in his body and his blood, the healing you need this month, he makes available. That no sickness will be able to come near you. That wherever that infirmity is coming from, you are already immune in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say better, amen. Amen. Somebody may be wondering, oh, do I need to have the communion every time? <laughs> the Bible says, as often as we do what? It says, as often as we do it, we do show the Lord's death till he comes. And the Bible says, as often as you drink it, in remem- we should do it in remembrance of it. Now, each time you are doing it, uh, 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 you are not just having a ceremony. In fact, I like the way the message version says it. The message version says, you will have reason to come again and again. Again and again to the communion table. Whatsoever is your own reason for this month of April, in this communion, the power of God that takes away, go to work on your behalf in the name of Jesus. That power speak in your family. That power speak in your home. That power speak in your life in the name of Jesus. I want you to please understand something. All that was done to make sure death didn't enter a house, to take away death from entering houses, was to put the blood on the lintel. That is, the moment they put that blood on the lintel, the death was not permitted to enter. It takes away death. As you take this communion tonight, and you get to your houses, and you declare over the house, (laughs) death will not enter the place. In the name of Jesus, sickness will not enter there. In the name of Jesus, affliction will not enter there. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, say better, amen. Amen. So just talk to God for a minute as we bless the communion.
Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. As you partake in the body of our Lord Jesus, I pray that this body will take away every sickness. By his stripes you are healed. Every burden that you have been carrying, you will carry no more. In Jesus' name. After the same manner also he took the cup and when he had stopped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood these do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup you do show the lost death till he comes in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit drink the blood of Jesus open your mouth and just declare the Bible says declare that you may be justified declare what you want God to take away take away your life take away your home declare that death is taken away from you Declare that sickness is taken away from you. Declare that there shall be no miscarriage in your house. There shall be no miscarriage in your dwelling. There shall be no loss anywhere around you. In the name of Jesus. Declare that every injury, every wound is taken away. Every injury, every wound is taken away. In the name of Jesus. There will be no anomaly. There will be no miscarriage. There will be no mistake. Everything is taken away in the name of Jesus. Healing that is the children's bread is our portion now. In the name of Jesus. We are whole. We are well. In the name of Jesus. Declare, declare, declare. He said, declare thou that thou may be justified. Declare to be justified. Lord, I declare. The Bible says you are justified or condemned by the words of your mouth. I refuse condemnation. I declare that I'll be justified. In the name of Jesus. The victory of Calvary is ours. Jesus took it away. I believe it. I receive it. The testimony is our portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to agree together concerning a baby that has just been born. That all is well with this child. 
and just declare that any negative report is taken away in the name of Jesus. I want you to just agree with me. All is well with this child. No matter the negative reports, we take them away by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus takes away that negative report. The blood of Jesus takes it away completely, completely. As a church, we agree tonight that by the reason of the blood of Jesus, negative reports of any kind is taken away in the name of Jesus. The power of resurrection and life. Give life to that child. Give life to that baby. In the name of Jesus, we declare it is well. We declare the child is well. We declare the mother is well. We declare the father is well. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. We command a quickening of the mortal body. That the spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God begin to quicken the mortal body. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is born of flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of spirit is spirit. We declare the life in the spirit. The life of resurrection. Quicken the mortal body of this child. In the name of Jesus. That they will thank you. Thank you, blessed Father. We release the blood of Jesus. Begin to pray that the blood of Jesus will flow through the veins of this baby. The blood of Jesus begin to flow through the veins. The blood with life enter into his body. In the name of Jesus, this child received the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father eternal, we thank you. Thank you because you are the lamb that takes away. And you took away every sickness, every depth. You took away death. You took away even diseases. You took away iniquity. Accusations that could stand against us, you took them away. That day we are grateful. We exalt your name. Wherever there is any trace of infirmity in our bodies, we say, take them away now in the name of Jesus. We believe they have been taken away and we receive perfect health in our bodies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet and bless the name of the Lord tonight. Let's thank him for victory that we are enforcing. Victory that was given to us thousands of years ago. I want us to thank God for the privilege even to remember and partake of that victory tonight. Let's thank God because the word of God is yea. And we are agreeing with it and saying amen. That according to as it is written, the victory that was given unto us thousands of years ago, is made manifest in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let's thank God for the privilege to know the truth, for the privilege to live the life that God wants us to live on earth. That no matter what the enemy tries to put together, we know the truth. The Bible says, by knowledge shall the just be delivered. We are delivered by the knowledge of the truth. I want us to thank God. The world does not know that. The world is running at a skelter. But we know the source of our lives. We know the source of our strength. I want us to thank God for being the source of our lives and the source of our strength. Father, we bless you. Thank you for quickening our mortal bodies tonight to fulfill destiny. Thank you for empowering us to fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, we worship you. We give glory to you. Be thou exalted, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's thank God for our pastor that God has used to lead us to pray, to share the word tonight, that God will water his life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says here that water shall be watered. God will water every area of his life in the name of Jesus. This quickening spirit of God will quickening every area of his life. His spiritual life, his physical life, his health, in wealth, in wisdom, in knowledge, in understanding, in favor with God and man. 
in the name of Jesus. He was empowered to fulfill destiny. Every good plan of God concerning his life will come to pass in the name of Jesus. He's empowered to fulfill destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you. We are grateful, oh Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord. Hallelujah. For all you have done for us, we say thank you, Jesus. We are grateful, oh Lord. Let us package a worthy offering to the King of Glory tonight just to thank Him and show our gratitude. Oh, oh Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord, hallelujah, for all you have done for us. We say thank you, Jesus, we are grateful, oh You are, you are good and all the miracles you've done has brought us joy for we are changed and all the hopes we have we place in you right now and we will say that you are good and all the miracles you've done has brought us joy. For we are changed, and all the hopes we have, we place in you right now. Father, we declare, Father, we declare that we love. for you this evening thank you for first loving us thank you for loving us eternally beyond what we can ask for we are very grateful thank you for loving us when we were very very unlovable we are grateful Lord Jesus we express our appreciation tonight by this little token we ask that you please accept it in the name of Jesus and please we ask for a heart that we always show appreciation, not just in the things we give alone, but in the ways we live our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please let our lives be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' mighty name. Bless this offering. Bless every one of us that are giving and those that are not even able to give. Let us always have resources to give. In the name of Jesus. Use us as your treasurers here on earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, to reveal the secret of true riches unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Almighty Father. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are thankful, let your clap, uh, 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 clapping be much more than that. Hallelujah. We want to thank God tonight. And we know that the miracles of tonight are permanent in the name of Jesus. On Friday we have, thank God it's Friday. So what can we give unto the Lord except to thank him for every day of mercy and faithfulness? So we are meeting here 6 o'clock to 6.45 Please, if you have genuine reasons not to be here, then watch online. But if you can make it here, please, God will love to see you here. 6 o'clock to 6.45, the power of God is always present. The presence of God is always mighty. So let's come together to appreciate our loving Father. And the Lord will bless us as we do so in Jesus' name. Let's say the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely the Lord's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And we shall live. We shall not die. We shall live to declare the wonderful works of the Lord, the faithfulness of the Lord, the counsel of the Lord in the land of the living. This year, 2024, next year, 2025, and many, 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 many blessed years to come. Jesus tarries in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Shalom. The Lord bless you. Have a good night.